I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something, even this conversation alone can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kelly. We are back once again with another video. If you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button, guys. If you are into true crime, politics, and news commentary, I guarantee you, you will not regret joining us here on my channel. And if you are a returning subscriber or listener to the channel, thank you so much for being a friend. Please go ahead and make sure you guys are still subscribed. You guys know YouTube is a hater, okay? They do be hating. And go ahead and give me a follow on Twitter while you're at it. I would love that for me and you. And I would really appreciate it, guys. Any interaction you can do with the channel, it really does help me out very much. And I would be very grateful for any of it. So like the video, comment, smash the subscribe, whatever, guys. I appreciate you all the same. And let's get into it. We're going to be discussing this topic that is, I have to say, guys, it, it made my heart very happy. And I had not heard about this. So it's very easy, even if you are, you know, entrenched, as entrenched in politics as, as someone like me, who, you know, I would say, like, I'm, like, you know, pretty... Uh, above average as far as uh, somebody who's like politically inclined and politically, um, you know, knowledgeable as far as that scale goes, you know, but I still had no idea that this bill was even a thing, you know, until I found out about it uh, just the other day. So I wanted to come on here and do a video because this has been sweeping the nation and I am very glad that it has finally come to my state, uh, the state of Louisiana. So we are getting or we are going to be voting soon, you know, our representatives on a quote unquote, don't say gay bill. Okay. I don't know why we're calling it that. I don't know why everyone is so hooked on this narrative, but nevertheless, it is here. Uh, and it is a bill basically against the indoctrination of, you know, teachers teaching gender shit, gender weird stuff to kids in public schools. We're against it. Absolutely. And so this bill would address that and put a stop to it for the most part. There are some flaws in this bill and there are some things that I personally want to see changed and that I will be personally taking action to voice my concerns and to see if, you know, I can, I can get politically uh, activated into this, you know, process to try to make some of these changes that we need to see and, you know, get involved in this, uh, in this process. So let's get into it guys. Um, this, you know, I'm going to try to make this kind of quick. It's just going to be a one hit or quitter topic. So, uh, cause I know not everyone obviously lives where I live, but it's still very important and it's going to be interesting and very humorous. As you can see from the thumbnail here, we have a cast of characters. So don't fear guys. We're still going to get into the Keck. So speaking of Keck, the legendary Keck Meister himself, I just wanted to include this topic because I saw this video on Twitter and I didn't know where to put it. So I just wanted to lump it in here because I, I didn't want to wait till like next Twitter Tuesday. So I just felt it was too important to show, I mean, to not show. So let's get into the Keck Meister himself, the orange man of them all. Uh, there was a video that came out of this woman and just to kind of remind you guys, E. Jean Carroll is in the process of suing Donald Trump for an alleged uh, grape situation, right? And Trump called it in, uh, in, in his deposition the most ridiculous, disgusting story, okay? And I believe him. It sounds ridiculous and disgusting. And why would anyone say that about a woman? Uh, I thought it was believe all women and all that. Well, absolutely no. We do not believe that here on my channel. If you guys don't know that by now, then you should know. It's not believe all women. It is believe the truth. And, uh, it's, and it's not this, this, 
reeks of untruths. So some other statements made by Trump in regards to these claims uh, were, it didn't happen. It, it didn't happen, said Trump in a deposition which was taken in his Florida home, Mar-a-Lago. Trump, who appeared uncharacteristically dour, went on to say that if it did happen, it would have been reported in minutes. Minutes. Because Burdolf Goodman, where he admitted he shopped <laughs> timely, is a very busy store, okay? Uh, it's very, the most busy store. Um, sorry, that's my Trump impression. Not very good. You know, whatever. W we move on. So, the luxury department store is located just a block from Trump Tower. It's the most ridiculous, disgusting story. It's just made up, Trump said. So, and I believe him. I do. Because if you can get one look, okay, at, <laughs> at this woman here, you would probably believe me as well and believe Trump as well because this woman's out of her freaking mind. She's off her damn rocker. Y'all follow me on Twitter at Unbecoming Kelly and let's get into this video here and this utter nut job, okay? You don't feel like a victim. I was not thrown on the ground and ravished. Oh, really? Which, the word rape carries so many mm. sexual connotations. Is that right? This was not... This was not sexual. Oh. For, it just, it, it hurt. It just, what, it just, Girl. you know. Well, I think most people think of rape as a, I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not I a think sexual. most people think of rape as being sexy. Mm. Uh, what? Huh? Let's take a short break. Think of the fantasies. <laughs> mm. Sorry, what? We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, <laughs> we'll talk more on the other side. You're fascinating to talk to. Oh, is that right? Okay. Well, somebody, can we get, can we get, uh, can we get a, a tech in here? Because grandma has wandered off of the bus. We got to get her back for, you know, arts and craft hour at the old folks home. Because what the fuck are you talking about? Literally, what the F? Anderson Cooper could not wait to get to a break fast enough. I'm sure, like, as soon as that camera cut, they were shuffling this woman off the set. Let's hear it one more time. You don't feel like a victim. I was not thrown on the ground and ravished. <laughs> which the word rape carries so many sexual oh, tell connotations. Us more. Tell us this more. was not. This was not sexual. Mm. It just. It. It hurt. It mm. just. What. It just. You know. Well, so you're I telling think me most people think of rape as a. I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not. I a, think a most sexual. people think of rape as being sexy. Mm. Mm, no. 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 Let's take a short break. Think of the <laughs> fantasies. Mm. What? We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more on the other side. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> you don't feel like a victim. What a fucking not... weirdo. What in the world? Like, okay. So you guys, y'all see why I wanted to include this. This is just very funny to me. Um, most people think, so are, so are you telling me you had a rape fantasy sin like situation with Trump and that like it hurt because the wiener was too big? Like what are you tell what are you telling me right now? Please explain because you're not making any sense, lady. It's giving uh, yikes. Okay, I just don't even know. I don't I don't know what to make of it, guys. You know what? You know, y'all help me out. Let me know. What do y'all think? Is <laughs> I'm glad that this footage. I'm thankful that it exists. You know, flat out just. I'm very grateful. Thank you to the Trump gods, you know, the ones that, you know, all the angels that look after all of the MAGA movement and, you know, th it's, it's, thank you. Thank you. That's all I have to say. So anyways, let's move on to our topic of the day and let's talk about this newest bill coming out of my home state of Louisiana. It, this is from WWNO. Louisiana is the latest state to file its own, uh, don't say gay bill, whatever, stupid, uh, for its public schools. Okay. Because God forbid, God forbid, the kids don't talk about sexuality. What, crazy thought. Weird. So Louisiana became the latest state to file a Florida style don't say gay bill when state rep Dodie Horton introduced new legislation Thursday on the House floor. The bill would limit and in some grades prohibit the discussion of sexual orientation or gender identity in public schools. While the bill directly identifies teachers, school employees, and other presenters, opponents have raised concerns that students could face consequences since the legislation would result in less inclusive schools. You know, what, like, what consequences? Just, 
tell them not to talk about it. Like, they won't talk about it if you don't. Like, they're, they're, I guarantee you, most kids don't want to have sex talk with their teachers, okay? You guys are making it weird, okay? Sorry, you are. So, um, the bill says no teacher, school employee, or other presenter shall cover the topics of sexual orientation or gender identity in any classroom discussion or instruction in kindergarten through grade eight. No teacher, school employee, or other presenter shall discuss his own sexual orientation or gender identity with students in kindergarten through grade 12. So basically meaning that, um, after, after eighth grade, it can be broadly discussed in terms of maybe the students, you know, issues that they might be having if they're brought up to said teacher or if there is some sort of light discussion, you know, maybe sexual education classes basically will be would be permitted at some level after grade eight. Before grade eight, no discussion of either your sexuality as a teacher or the students or any mention of it brought into the classrooms. I'm sorry. Um, color me fancy, but like, I, I don't, I don't find a problem with that. I don't find any issue, you know, call me traditional, but I, I just don't know. I'm not seeing uh, a problem here. What is the, what are we fighting for? We're fighting for the, the ability to be able to tell a kindergartner, uh, that, that you're into weird gay butt sex. Like what, what's happening? What's, what's the problem? Please explain it to me. Anyways, so the language in the bill is subject to interpretation, especially when it comes to the phrase classroom discussion. This could mean eliminating books with LGBT, you know, eliminating books with LGBTQ characters or, or removing people who identified as gay and lesbian from history lessons. Yeah, because that's what that's what they that's what they do. That is what they do. How about just if you're going to talk about a historical figure? We don't need to talk about who they banged, okay? What What is the deal? What are you people into? What kind of freak-ass shit are you into? If you want to know who George Washington was hooking up with, okay? Or who Harriet Tubman liked to, uh, whose genitalia she liked to have, you know, relations with, okay? Just, let's, let's glaze over it. Let's talk about the history that they made. I guarantee you that historical figures are not in history books for who they liked to penetrate, okay? It's just not a thing. It should never come up. What's the deal? Y'all tell me. Okay, student groups focused on sexual orientation, gender identity, and allyship could be prohibited. Oh my God, not allyship until at least high school and possibly after, depending on interpretation of the bill. So yeah, um, I'll link this article, guys. It goes on more word salad and things of that nature. But I want to get into some of the clips and then I'm going to play for you guys my own little recording. Uh, and let's get into the first clip here. This is from Greg Price did a thread on Twitter in relation to these uh, hearings that they had on, uh, I think it was on April 27th. It was last week sometime. So the Louisiana House Education Committee just moved a bill out of committee to make it illegal for teachers to hide a child's gender transition from parents. Well, thank God, because, I mean, literally, why do they need to hide that anyways? Why do why does a teacher need to have a secret with a student, especially one as significant as something like this, where children should not even be um, discussing discussing changing their gender as if that was a real thing, but... You know, trying to hide it from their parents? Absolutely not. What is the issue? Please, somebody explain it. Uh, okay, so here was the reaction from the uh, LGBT mafia people who testified once the bill passed. Y'all. House floor by a seven to five vote. Is it? Is it? Appreciate your time. Uh, do I have a, is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Oh my God! As amended favorably. Because that to the House that sounds like a completely reasonable person, vote. right? Eight. That sounds like just the kind of person that you want to be having these sorts of intimate conversations with your children, right? Okay, yeah, no, they're unhinged. These people are crazy. Uh, so the committee also moved another bill to the floor that bans classroom discussion of gender identity and sexual orientation from K through 12th graders. One of the people who testified against it was a drag queen with a blue face who called himself. Big gay baby. Let's let the big gay baby speak, okay? Let's just see what a big gay baby even has to say. Live in New Orleans in the House District 97 and Senate District 4. Thank you all for letting me speak. I believe we are all here for the same reason, which mm. is to make schools a safe, safe place for safe students and for faculty to thrive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm excited to share this space with you. Wow. But like I said, I am Maxwell. 
I am trans. I am big gay baby. Mm. My pronouns are they, them. What are yours? Normal. I'm here to ask you to vote no on HB 466. Speaking before you today is a 27-year-old drag artist that lives every day to secure kindness, validation, love, and acceptance for the wounded child that still feels closeted inside me. For the inner child that remembers feeling alone and alien in school, for the inner child that believed something was fundamental. You're just doing too much, okay? The makeup, the wig, the, the title, the big gay baby. Like, what? what is it even? And I, I would love to know, when did drag queens become so entrenched in this fight? Like, since when is a drag queen under the, the, the like, fight for trans, you know, tr the, the T-word issue? When? When did it happen? And where was I when this was decided? Like, I didn't get to vote on this last time I recall. Because last I thought was that drag queens were simply gay men for the most part who just like to put on a little makeup, you know, do a little high heel number and stuff some ones into their padded bras and then go home and call it a night you know, and, and be a gay man the next day. That's, I mean, that's what I thought. So since when are you guys so present in this, like, fight for what? For, like, to push, you know, being a, a transsexual on kids? Like, what? what's... Listen, I can't even touch on it too much because I don't know what I'm allowed to say. But I will just say that, like, drag queens... Y'all used to be, like, so normal. Like, y'all used to be, like, what? Y'all were okay. Like, y'all had y'all's own thing going on. Since when do y'all now need to, like, assert yourself onto kids and, like, go up and, like, be part of the fight for, like, you know, the tea people? Like, what what's happening? What's happening? Y'all, did y'all get bored? Like, is there not enough makeup and high heels to play with? Like, what's happening? Please let me know. I'm very confused. This video has me stuck on stupid. So let's get into another one here, guys. These are just short clips. Um, I'm very grateful that Greg here was able to put all of these into a little highlight reel for, uh, for us guys, because I mean, he really did capture the essence of this, uh, hearing. Mrs. T, which is what they called me. Oh, really? Mrs. T, are you a boy or are you a girl? Well, you know, Mrs. would uh, signify that you're, you're a girl. So it's not, it's not rocket science. And no wonder the kids are so stupid in public education because they don't know how to relate the word Mrs. to a female. Okay. Y'all have them so confused and utterly out here looking like idiots that they cannot deduce that one plus one equals two. Mrs. equals woman. Okay. Got it. Nope. That wasn't very hard. Should I really have shut that conversation down? Should I have shut it down so that the students, cry? the five students that after that conversation came out to me, scary, didn't terrifying. know that it was okay? Mm. Should I have been punished for having that conversation? Don't cry. Those are not my kids. Yeah, those are right. your kids. Yeah, exactly. And they knew that they could come to me for that acceptance mm. and that love. Mrs. Mm. T, which is what they... No, Mrs. T, just, it's, it's real simple. Just say, I'm a girl. And then move on. You don't have to make it a big um, coming to Jesus moment. You don't have to make it a big ordeal, have a parade, and, you know, an, an affirmation ceremony. It's like, it's just really not that deep. That's really all there is to it. So let's get into this uh, queer, and I'm not using that derogatory like in a, in a mean or derogatory way they literally have queer on the front of their shirt so let's see what they have to say hi my name is max Ravo and i use he or they pronouns oh really do and you? i am here to speak in opposition you look like a lady one. also hp 466 but i was unable to speak on that one oh, darn um sorry excuse yeah. me yeah i it's identify fair. as a trans male Mm. And I moved to, I'm not a Louisiana native. I moved here five short years ago. Mm. And in that five short years, this place has become my home. Mm. I love this state. I moved here for the culture and the people. But this bill fosters an unsafe environment for all children. I keep hearing that we're trying to protect children, mm. but instead we're trying to harm them. Go back this where you came from. Will, 
As we've heard from other people on suicide rates, this bill will directly impact children and cause them suicidality. Oh, really? The, the blood of ch- trans youth will be on your hands. Mm. I, 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 I beg is- to differ, okay? I beg to differ because whose hands is the blood of the uh, detransitioners going to be on? Can anyone um, answer that for me? Because whose blood is going to be on the hands, or whose hands is the blood of these people who uh, make these transitions and then still come to the realization that they are not, in fact, what they were promised that they were going to be? You cannot become any last thing that you want to be in this world, okay? There are limits, especially when it comes to who you are fundamentally as a person, okay? I'm not talking about your personality or your ability to uh, achieve goals or your ability to, um, you know, succeed in life. I'm talking about you, your physical body. There are limitations there, okay? The same way that, like, you see all these people who, who go crazy with the plastic surgery eventually start to look like complete clowns and will have many different complications related to the plastic surgeries that they're getting. Same thing, okay? Whose hands is that blood going to be on? Because you're telling me that there's going to be all this blood on my hands and I don't see any. I just really don't. And I, I, I just could never accept that any blood is on my hands when all I'm doing is stating true facts and trying to um, stop or at least reduce people from doing harm to their physical bodies over mental disorders okay it's just i don't i fail to see your point here okay so i think there's a few more here let's get into these last few videos and then we'll hop on out of here guys let's see what this one's all about okay ilhan omar what are you doing out of congress you know nothing of my name i've asked this you will remove me from this room because you choose take her out bailiff Get her out of here. Get her out. Get her out, Taser. <laughs> what? What's that? Threats? Violence? You know nothing. What is your, what is your name, uh, person? Because I, like, I would love some context around this. This chick had to be physically removed from the committee room for refusing to give up the mic. Okay, well, wh- what's... Wh- I need more. I need more. I need more. Is there no more of this? Because that that was something I would like to see more of. I don't know. I guess that's it. I guess that, uh, that's all he's given us, okay? That's all he is going to give us. Let's move on to the video with the empty chair. Okay. Those fires are both figurative and literal. I'm here today to represent the teachers who are not scared of you. And if you are scared in this room, hmm. that's okay. Girl. But I'm here to tell you that we are here and we have always have been. You cannot we have always have us been? away. I am here to represent the Louisiana grit. Oh, I am wow. here to represent the New Orleans spirit that will never die. Wow. No matter how hell-bent nature and man seem on it what the spirit that urges you to be yourself as if your life depends on it because oftentimes as we have seen in this room today it does Mm. did someone die my message today is simple and short oh nicknames for some but not all is blatant discrimination and you know it nicknames for someone at all i will not misgender my students okay whatever i will say gay go to jail then and i will be a safe place okay whatever finally trans kids belong in our schools Mm, yeah go cry about it thank you why don't you just go cry about it okay a you're just a ridiculous person you really are i mean the dramatics it's the dramatics for me that really does it because what is so urgent? Like, did people die? She's like, the nicknames for some, but not all. I will, they will never stand. I will always speak out for those who cannot use their nicknames, okay? If you just can't use a nickname, where are you even safe anymore in this country? Where can you be safe to use a nickname? Oh, my God. 
faints, faints, has to be woken up, do, does a dramatic, like, um, you know, gone with the wind style faint, okay? Get her out of here. We need another bailiff. Okay, guys, let's keep going. There's more. This thread is long. I actually finished a Tulane University with a master's degree with a four. But you know what? No one cares, ma'am. Perfect grade. You should have never does gone not to college. Matter for this body. Nope, it we does don't not care. Matter what I say that isn't. Let me start her over. Hang on. You know what? None of it's intelligent or logical. Y'all notice one thing though? One pattern here. Have y'all seen one man coming up here to shriek into the microphone? Nevertheless, with a freaking mask on, y'all know how that irks me, okay? What? Okay. Let's try to... Okay. All right. I'm good. To Tulane University with a master's degree with a 4.0 that is perfect grades. Don't and make that me a does sandwich. Not matter for this body. It does not matter what I say that is intelligent or logical or well-spoken. I haven't heard one thing yet. Because my friend, whom I just met today was forcibly removed what? for speaking their mind. Wow. To you people who look at us bald-faced. You look at me. You deny my humanity. You have looked at up to 100 people. I haven't counted today. Mm. Queer people. Brave queer people who speak truth to the disgusting power of this body. <laughs> and I'm allowed to speak my mind and my opinion about this place. Oh, okay. And I have the privilege Whatever. of my skin that I am not being removed oh, for speaking the wow. same manner as my friend. Not you, who was forcibly whoa. removed from this. Oh, wow. Not you being racial. Um, uh, yeah. You know, when white people say they have white privilege, it's, it's giving... It's giving a whole lot of, I think I'm better than you because I'm white and I'm speaking these words, you know, calling myself having white privilege because, you know, I want to seem woke, but really I just think I'm better than you. That's all it, that's all it really translates to me because what? Body who will never earn my respect Ooh. and you'll see me again. I'm sure they're sad Trust about that. Trust you will see me again. Oh, Lord. Trust that you will see Scary. people like me, people like us, my friends, my comrades, you will see us again. Is that a threat? And if you don't see me again in this lifetime, you'll see me oh. in hell. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm dead ass. I'm not kidding. Not a threat. I educated myself, and I studied the dreaded queer and <laughs> racial critical theory. Oh, no. Not racial and critical theory. Ma'am, I have, you know, I hate to tell you, but you wasted your time and good hard-earned money going to school to study that nonsense because you know it did we and we see where it got you it didn't get you very far so yeah it explains a lot actually it really does explain Real a lot situation that one of my friends experienced girl what Speaking shut up hypothetical so i'll give you a real situation that mm. one of my friends experienced um he is also a transgender person, a student wow. my age, 17, and he was outed to his mother, who was mm. very unaccepting and violent Based. and rude. Based. And the minute she heard that he used he, him pronouns, <laughs> um, she smashed his phone. Based? She pulled him from school. Okay, lover. Disconnected cut contact with all of his friends i haven't been able to speak to him super forever. mom i don't know if he's really alive oh he they she's fine hypothetical so i'll give she's you great. a real situation she's better than you one of my friends ever friends. will be because guess what um, that little girl is has a mother who cares about her okay which is more than uh we can all say for a lot of you people i think it's safe to say that your friend is better off, okay? So, God bless that mother for doing the right thing. Very based woman in that, uh, in that instance. That's, that's the proper answer. When your daughter comes to you trying to he him, uh, their way, you know, around you, you just take that phone. You sm First of all, you never give them a phone. That's mistake number one. You take whatever devices they are using. You smash them up to pieces. You pull them out of school. You move to a country farm and you give them a cow to milk. Okay. That's, that's what you do. That's what you do. And they never speak to those kids that were influencing them ever again. And then you, you know, your life goes on. That's all. That's all it is. So this actually passed and will now go to the house floor, but there were uh, 
you know, 12 members that voted on this um, bill and whether or not it would pass. And there are eight Republican members of the uh, of this particular committee. You know, not of the House total, but that are that sit on this committee. There's eight Republicans and four Democrats, right? The vote was seven to five. So I took it upon myself to find out who the one Republican was that decided on that day that they were going to vote against the entrance against the interests of other Republicans and go along with the Democrats to indoctrinate children and to groom them into um sexual confusion and i give that person a little call and uh that person is um oh shoot now i'm forgetting her name oh man okay so, but i do want to share with you guys the call that i made to her office so let's go ahead and listen to that together guys brandy Hi, um, yes ma'am. My name's Kelly. Uh, I'm actually a resident of Louisiana, and I was just looking into the, um, the voting record on the HB 81 bill in regards to the legislation with uh, the pronouns and all of the, uh, they're, they're calling it the don't say gay bill, but just has to do with pronouns in schools and, and kids being able to use them. And I was just wanting to know, as a Republican, why um, this uh, representative decided to vote in uh, against this bill. If there was any explanation for her constituents. Um, I didn't ask her why she voted no for it. Are you for it or against it? I, I'm for it. As a Republican, I feel like she should be too. Okay. Um, I didn't ask her why. I haven't even gotten to talk to her actually. But uh-huh. you could do if... Um, we have a constituent feedback portal uh-huh. where it would be very helpful to her. It's called it's at district70.com, and you have to spell 70 out. So um, if you have, you know, people in Baton Rouge in her district that want to express their opinion, I've been directing everybody to go there because that will register the concern not only for this year and this bill but all future years on this topic okay so it can be very powerful information for her if somebody approaches her on the next term to say hey we need you to you know stand against this policy or put help us represent it uh, but anyway district70.com okay you see can be really good if you know just share with the local constituents mm-hmm. um, it could be any issue you know like whatever issue they have that's where she's taking her feedback and will put that all together for her her nucleus, you know, what the constituents are thinking in her area. Right, and I will do that. I appreciate the information. I just kind of was wanting to know um, what the, the thinking was there because if that is her actual personal stance and opinion, it's a, a bit concerning, and uh, it's something that I would like to know, being that she's up for re-election next year. So it's, uh, you know, I, I will go there and express my concerns, but it is um, a cause for concern for me if this is something that she personally believes uh, is something that she should be voting against just for her, you know, her own viewpoint. So. Is there any way I could uh, go about getting that information about her stance? I would. I, I looked this morning. I can't. I didn't see that 81. I was looking at 466 to see when it's going to come, come up next. You know, but. Yeah, I don't think it's 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 up yet for. I, I'm tracking the legislation now, but I don't see it has another uh, date scheduled, so. Yeah. But I think it's powerful to come to the Capitol, you know, and pass a note in and she'll come out and visit with you. That's. So, yeah, guys, the conversation went on for a little bit uh, after that, but she was basically giving me the runaround. This was a uh, assistant or a secretary of the representative and basically was just trying to, um, you know, just bullshit her way through that phone call. Uh, but it is powerful and it does actually make a difference. I just wanted to play that to kind of like... Uh, just demonstrate, guys, like, when I, when I, when I say, like, it, to call your representatives or, like, to, you know, take action or whatever, it can be something as simple as that. Like, that took me just eight minutes, that was an eight-minute phone call out of my day to express my concerns. And these people, these, uh, big gay babies out here, they are doing all of that plus more. So, in order to, like, help 
any sort of like balance, we have to start doing these sorts of things as well. And I will be showing up to the Capitol the next time that there is a vote or any sort of procedural um, issue or any sort of like um, procedural hearing in regards to this bill to uh, voice my concerns in public as well. So this is something I can do locally and it, it takes no time. Like I, I routinely, if there's any sort of issues call federal senators, I call my local Congress people and the, this is a state um, representative that, you know, I took the time to call and, and express my concerns. And this was somebody who I was able to just easily figure out who this was, figure out when they were up for reelection, which is next year. And that's another thing you can use as leverage. If you just, you know, tell them like, Hey, what is your deal? Like question them, make them accountable, hold them accountable and say, you know, like, I know when you're up for reelection and I will campaign against you, I will do everything I can do in my power to make sure that you lose your power that's how you will start to see these people get their shit together. And it takes, you know, it takes a village. So I just will say that if you guys, you know, have this going on in your local areas, start there, you know, do whatever you can do. But if you want to take action, if you want to, um, see all of this madness stop, you have to do something. So y'all let me know guys, what do y'all think? Put it in the comments down below. Please like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter. Do all of the things, guys. I would very much appreciate all of that. Do it for Big Gay Baby, okay? Do it for the Big Gay Baby. And until next time, I will see you all later. Bye. I just tell the truth. And telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something, even this conversation alone, can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you.